All right. I've now had the Peter McKinnon Nomadic camera pack for a full week. And I must say, this is definitely my favorite camera bag, backpack or otherwise, that I've ever had in my many years being a hobbyist photographer. Aside from the aesthetic of it, which I definitely love, the gunmetal black, the ballistic leather, the sleek look of this backpack, it's the way that's engineered so that it's easier for photographers, professional or otherwise, to organize, store, and protect uh, their equipment really shows that they had the end user in mind when designing this backpack. So I really applaud the team that had a hand in creating such a wonderful, wonderful backpack. And it looks great too. So that's just really, really cool. So in this video, I wanted to show my what's in my camera bag 2020 big boy edition because this bag is not going to be a daily driver. I do have a smaller camera backpack for just a body, maybe a couple of lenses or a body and lens in the drone. And, and this uh, Peter McKinnon Nomadic camera pack is more of the bigger shoot, bigger gig, maybe one to three day trip should you need one. So let's go ahead and see what I was able to store in here for short trips. So despite uh, all of us being in shelter in place mode, I was able to run the camera backpack through its paces. I do live quite close to the park and during my daily walk. I just took this out just to get a feel for it, make sure that it fits me well. And the first two things that I'll show you is when the camera backpack comes to you, uh, the waist strap is there. I took it out. I felt that I didn't need it. I just took that out, stored that somewhere else to make it a little bit more easy and sleek too. The bracing that you have in the back really does help in distributing the weight. So I compare this to my other backpacks. I do have a low pro, pro tactic, 450 all weather too. And I stored less things in there, but that felt heavier than this. Without further ado, outside compartment, I don't have anything in it. Um, this is where you have your RFID protected pouch. You can put your passport in there, some extra cards. I don't have any there right now, um, but let's start with the front pocket. All right, for the front pocket. <laughs> Bam. Because I've only been going to the park a lot, I do have my, my park towel, my picnic blanket. But here is designed so that you can put your clothes in. So in the future, I'll get a couple of more nomadic pouches that fits exactly into these slots. But for now, since I'm not going on trips, it's pretty empty except for a few things, of course. Uh, in one of the pockets. I do have the charger for the Canon ESR. I have an extra both adapter and power bank anchor brick that has a USB and uh, micro USB ports for multiple charging. And I have a bigger battery pack that also has a flashlight for emergencies and an extra micro USB cord to charge some of the things that we have in the bag. So this is what I have in the front pocket for now. So imagine this with clothes when going on trip. From the back, this is where the real magic happens. I cannot stress enough how much I love the design of the back, uh, the fly to flag logo. I just love skulls. The vent so that the heat from your back escapes when you have it in your back is really useful. And the, the, the sturdy foam padding that helps in the distribution of weight is you know essential in the design and, and you can like slide this in luggage should you need. So let's open up the back and see the gear that I was able to stuff in my Peter McKinnon Nomadic camera pack. There you go. From right to left, we have the camera cube and in the camera cube, I'm bringing in, I only have the Mavic Pro. So I have the Mavic Pro, it's remote and it's chargers in the camera cube right now. And it's really designed for that particular size. The remote goes to this bottom slot over here. Uh, I have their cords and chargers. 
And I also have the Polar Pro uh, variable NDs. I have these 8, 16, and 32. Usually I just slap the 16 there and then it kind of works for the most part, even if it's too bright or it's too dark. Um, so I use this. It helps in making your drone footage a lot more cinematic if you can control that shutter to use the 180 degree rule. So that's in the camera cube right now. Mavic Pro drone, the remote Polar Pro. In its same slot, I have the switch pod. People use it for vlogging. For me, I use it a lot more when I need to stabilize my video. I love using the switch pod. It's just really sleek and compact and you can like slide it in places. For accessories case, I made this into my action camera bag. So here I have two GoPro Hero 7s a smaller tripod for the action cameras or the camera that you have, but not. And I have the GoPro charger with a couple of extra batteries for the GoPros. I don't do GoPros a lot. This is just a nice, just in case. I can take this all out, put in chargers, uh, random things, but it kind of fits in very neatly right now with the way that it has been organized for the cords, a small tripod, the charger. And here in this random slot, I also slotted in the ball head that I use for my switch pod. Ball head right there. In the uh, accessories case sleeve, are just all the essential cords that most our gear will need. So I have the Apple Lightning charger and I have two USB to USB C charger. One is shorter, one is longer. A lot of the chargers that we have, a lot of the card readers that we have will, you know, need their own cord. So I like it neatly tucked away in this sleeve here. And that is our accessories case action camera case. For the gear itself, I will mostly use the Canon EOS R that I'm shooting with right now with the 16 to 35. For real gigs, I do more photography. So for here, we will be using the 1DX Mark II with a 2470. So this is the camera and lens combo that is pretty much uh, the gold standard in terms of versatile shooting. So I can use it for landscapes, for model photography, for street, for fashion. I have this as a default setup, but lately I've been falling in love again with portraits, be it indoors or outdoors. So the main lens that I opted to slide in here to bring around with me is the 8512 from Canon. It's super shallow depth of field. The compression with the 85 millimeter will get you those really, really creamy, creamy shots. It has a bit of length, but I like that in most of my shots. The thing that I feel that I will switch this up a lot with will be my Canon 50L. For now, I have the 24 to 70 and an 85. And then weirdly, I'm slotting in the 100 macro. Reason being is it's also a great portrait lens. This is light, it's a small, it's compact, and it's tack sharp, so, and it's fits perfectly in one of the, the lens slots that I built for this camera bag. Moving on, for video, the mic that I opted to get is the DT D3 Mic Pro. I watched a lot of YouTube videos reviewing this against its main competitor, the Rode Video Mic Pro, and a lot of them say that this is not only 100 bucks cheaper, but also quality-wise, might even be better than the road. I'm not a great videographer. I don't do a lot of videos yet, but the ones that I've used this with, I've never had a real problem. It's pretty much straight plug and play, rechargeable, turns on and off on its own whenever it's plugged into the camera. So you really don't have to think about too many things. So I have that slotted here, give it a lot of leeway so it's not too compressed. And then for this random slot, we have the rain pouch, which I feel I might leave already because I think the ballistic leather can hold wetness out enough. So we'll probably leave this. 
and then I have the cords that come with the bag uh, meant for the outside when you're strapping in a gimbal or a tripod or a Joby Gorilla Pod. I have it slotted here just in case. And then this is where I slot in the lens and body cap of the camera as well when in use. So that's the main compartment. This is my big boy gear that I'm gonna rock for a little bit. There's gonna be a few more versions where I might have a different trio of lenses. But for now, I think a 24 to 70, 85 and 100 it's kind of like my long distance portrait glamour street kind of shoot looking right now so that's the main compartment moving on to the side slots i'm using the accessories and the slots the way that it has been designed and i really really like how it's going for the first bigger compartment is the filter case and in the filter case i too have a couple of variable NDs. They are not branded. They're somewhat generic. They get the job done. I also have a star filter here in case there's a nice light source when I want to do a little bit more flare in my shot. And a step up, step down ring. So I can use my variable NDs onto my other lenses that are not 82 millimeters. I also slotted here the lens pen. Essential. Always clean your gear. And then for the second slot that came with a camera pack, if you backed the backpack and Kickstarter when it started, when you get the full gear, you get the battery case. So the batteries here are for my Canon EOS R. I have three LPE6s. And I think I mentioned before, it comes with stickers so that you can indicate which battery has been charged or hasn't been used and which battery has been used and is discharged. So that's simple touches like those makes the consumers feel that, you know, the, the people that built this and designed this really cared. And I, I really do love the magnetic snap. Okay. It just makes everything so sleek. There's no bulging hooks and snap so slides in easier and the last slot we have is memory card case and i just filled it the way that it should be filled uh, you can insert up to six sd cards right now i have three i don't re i really don't like my memory cards to be filled to the brim but i have three sd cards for the canon esr i have a couple of cf and cfast two cards for the other couple of slots and that's it this is my big boy setup for now. I'll do a couple of more versions with a Canon ESR this time and that'll be more video or run and gun. I've been experimenting or tinkering with a version where I can do a dual body setup where the Canon ESR is in the camera cube with a lens and then one DX Mark II in the main body. You know, we can use a, a video setup when traveling and a photography setup when traveling. This is my setup. Tell me about your camera bag. What are you rocking? What types of lenses and bodies uh, are you using for short or long trips? Let's compare, let's trade notes. I appreciate you watching this video. And if you haven't yet, uh, please consider subscribing to the channel. It really means a lot to me. I like learning from a lot of you guys and and I would love to contribute to the conversation of exchanging information about our passion. So again, thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.